The next step is assembling the face frame. Now, we assemble frames for all kinds of trim details all the time, so this is something that I'm extremely experienced at and kind of passionate about. I found that for me, pocket screw joinery is the best way to put those frames together for a couple reasons, but one of the biggest ones is once I get the joint together, as soon as I drive that last screw, I'm ready to move on to the next deal. Now, there's just a few quick things that you always want to remember about pocket hole joinery. The first one is cut all your pieces accurately and everything will go together well. All your rails should be exactly the same length, so if you can use a stop to cut them, that's much better. Now, to make a strong pocket hole joint, the screws need to be going into the edge grain of the wood. You never run screws, if possible, into the end grain of wood. So, technically, the rails almost always have the pocket screws in them. You want good square edges on your boards, a nice clean edge, because anytime you're joining wood, the cleaner the edge, the better joint you're going to get. Of course, you want to avoid any wood that's got a twist in it. And finally, make a nice square cut with your miter saw because that pocket screw is going to pull the joint together at whatever angle you've cut your boards. So it's a really simple method, but you get great results. And the best part for me is it's fast. But one of the things I try not to do is make my frame exactly the width that I want it to be. Our cabinet is 24 and 5 eighths wide. I believe that's right. I'm going to double check in a minute. But I want my face frame to be about an eighth of an inch wider than that when I make it. And here's why. I let it hang out a little bit on each side and after the glue is dried, I take a flush trim router bit and flush trim it. That way I always get a perfect joint because I'm counting on the router to cut it flush. And usually after the glue is dried, a quick flush trim and a little bit of sanding and I've got a nearly perfect joint. I'm just going to check the width of this cabinet. Okay, wow. So it's 25 and 5 eighths. I'm really glad I checked that. So if the cabinet is 25 and 5 eighths and I want to have a little extra width, I'm going to hold 25 and 3 quarter right there. And I'm looking at the other side and so all my rails need to be cut 20 and 13 sixteenths. Okay, so I need to go set the stop on my miter saw at 20 and 13 16 so I get both those rails, the top and bottom, exactly the same length. Okay, so now I've got my stop set. The other thing that I want to do is make sure I've got a square cut on this end, so I'm just going to take just a fraction off this end. Now slide over. Make sure I don't have like any sawdust in there. It's going to mess me up. So now I'm ready to put some pocket screw holes in the back of this. Now on this wider board, I like to put three in. Uh, up to about two and a half, I just put two, but this is a four inch piece, so I'm going to put three holes in it. So these pieces I actually ran through a sander, which is a great luxury. I'm very thankful to have got one. But the biggest thing is they need to all be the same thickness. So you could just run them through a planer. Those little bench top planers do a fabulous job. But the smoother you have these, once you've assembled them, the less sanding you have to do. This edge is nice and clean. I ran these pieces together on edge through a planer to clean the edge up. But this edge that has a pencil mark on it, is rough. There's no need to do anything to this edge because when I run that flush trim router by it, it's going to clean that all up. Of course, I do have to pay attention and make sure I get that pencil mark turned out when I'm assembling the frame. So I'm going to turn the sanded face down. I'm going to just put this bench clamp in here. Two clean edge on that. 
I always put glue in these joints. Some people say that you don't need to, but I always put glue in them. I'm using the inch and a quarter screws. Uh, you know, the inch and a half would probably pull it together a little bit better, but I've always had pretty good results with the inch and quarters. This is Poplar, which is, uh, some people say it's the softest of the hardwoods. So I could really either use coarse or fine thread screws. Either one would probably work. But I'm going ahead and using some fine thread screws. One of the things that I learned over the years too is I always want to be trying to glue my face frame to a fresh plywood cut because sometimes these veneers on the center of the plywood can swell up with humidity and then you're trying to push the face frame down against plywood that's basically bowed up in the middle and you never get a good joint on the edge. Now, it's still difficult to get a good joint, but it's almost impossible if you don't have a nice, fresh, clean cut. Now, the other thing that I wish I could tell you exactly how to do is put just enough glue on here. Uh, you want to have a pretty good amount so that it's popping out when you're clamping, but too much and you have to get a wet rag and wipe it out of there. Now, I'm hoping I'm not going to be demonstrating that. I'm just going to start out putting a pretty nice little bead here. And this is much easier with the cabinet laying on its back than standing up because the glue doesn't start running until I put the, uh, the face frame on it. All right. Now I've only got about a sixteenth of an inch for this to hang over. Okay, so I'm just going to flush this on the top. I'm going to feel that I've got about a sixteenth of an inch hanging out each side. And I'm just going to put a few headless pins down through here. I mean, you could measure it, but I don't really need to. As long as I can feel there's about a sixteenth now, I'm going to slide that up to flush. Now I'll just work my way down the side. Uh, at this point, I can go ahead and put these pocket screws in, so I'm going to grab my drill and do that. Just going to work my way on down this side. Just a few spots. Now I'm going to use some K body clamps to clamp this on because they've got a pretty nice wide clamping surface and they don't tend to mar this. Now I haven't final sanded this anyway, but if I was using like a pipe clamp or something, I might need to use a pad strip to protect this, but the K bodies work pretty well. Now all I've got to do is find a couple men and a boy to help me put this on the floor of the shop and we can get back to working on the base cabinet. So this box is 27 and 3 quarters wide, so I want my face frame to be 27 and 7 eighths wide, so I've got that 16th of an inch to flush trim off. I'm just going to hold 27 and 7 eighths on this side, and I'm going to read on the other side. Looks to me like 22, and I'm going to make it 22 and 11 sixteenths. 
I'm going to make that rail 22 and 11 16 which is maybe a little bit on the wide side, but being a little extra wide just means I flush trim a little more off. But if I'm narrow, there's not much you can do. So 22 and 11 16 for all three of those rails. If you run your boards through your members for your face frame on edge through a planer like I do, one thing that you do have to be careful of is snipe. Uh, to me, it's almost impossible to run boards through a planer without getting a little bit of snipe at the end. So that means two things. One, I've got to make all my pieces a little extra long before I plane them. And then second, when I'm cutting to length like I was here, I need to just kind of run my hands over them and make sure that I'm not going to be using the part of the board that has a snipe because that can really make a mess, especially if you try to make a joint where there's a snipe in it. So the layout on this face frame is pretty straightforward. The top and bottom rails are just flush with the end of the styles. Then the only measurement I really have to worry about is coming down from the top eight inches down to get that drawer opening right. Next step is put this face frame on the box. So I'm just going to use my headless pinner to uh, tack this barely in place. Come down here and get the same at the bottom. Now, because I'm going to be using pocket screws for this, and they tend to push a little bit, I'm going to probably put a few more headless pins in this than I would if I was using a clamp. At this point, I'm actually squaring up the front of this box. So the thing I love about headless pins, you can put several of them in, and you can hardly tell they're there. Now, if I've done my job right, these are really going to pop that glue out of the joint. Now I'm ready to put the plywood back on here. Now, uh, a lot of people will use a quarter inch crown staple gun to nail that on. I've kind of gotten away from that because what I found is that quarter inch uh, nail crown stapler sets the staples almost halfway through a piece of quarter inch plywood, so you're really not getting that much strength. And also, Sometimes you'll have problems with the staple coming out in a place you don't want it to. What I started doing is using, this is kind of an upholstery stapler, one that you'd use to put tar paper or something on. And these are small staples, but they'll hold quite a bit. And I may put twice as many as you would the other, but it doesn't really matter. Nobody sees them. And I never have a staple come out in a place that I don't want it to come out. So the only thing I even want to worry about is just making sure I'm flush there. Once I've nailed down one side, if I come flush across here, it automatically squares up with the cabinet. Now some guys like to uh, glue these in, but my experience with that is it seems like often the glue ends up coming out somewhere you don't want it to, like in the inside corner of the cabinet. So I just use a few more staples on the back side where you don't see them. Gonna hold that flush, which means the cabinet's square. Now I've got that uh, stretcher rail across here, so I want to shoot a few staples into it. I'm gonna just push this in tight and come right down this side.
So up to this point, we haven't really sanded these face frames. We've got pretty good flush joints. If there's a big bump here, I'd need to sand this face frame pretty close to flush before I routed it. What I'm gonna do is make a climb cut pass first, and what that does is gets rid of some of the material without having a chance of it tearing out on this edge, because at this point, if it tears out, I've really got a problem. And uh, you, know, you just have to be careful when you make a climb cut, you just kinda keep the router well under control, and you're not trying to take all the material off, just some. <laughs> That's really nice and flush. Now just a little bit of sanding, we should have a great joint. So what I want to do now is just put some scraps of plywood on the floor to protect the side of the cabinet and I'll turn it on edge so I can get a really good sanding job here. It'll be right at the height I want to work at. So even though we put a lot of clamps on here, there's two or three places that I didn't really get the glue popped out like I wanted to. And so there's a little bit of a crack. Well, that crack when you paint this is really gonna show up. So what I'm gonna do is rub a little bit of glue in there and then sand over it while the glue's still wet. It's a little bit tricky because you wanna be careful not to burn through the veneer. But generally speaking, if you sand it while there's just a little bit of wet glue in that crack, it'll make perfect filler and you'll get a smooth joint. Now I'm on the very verge of sanding through the veneer. Again, that's this Chinese birch plywood. So it takes a little bit of practice, but on paint grade, it's kind of forgiving because the primer will take care of it. But if you're doing something stain grade, I'd say again, boy, try to get some good American plywood.